Hey guys, it's ASBOT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today's video is very, very important for you guys who are potentially looking at purchasing the Elephone U Pro. Because as soon as it was released, there were loads of videos talking about all the amazing things about this phone. And there are some absolutely great things, don't get me wrong. But we're also going to run over some of the things that those reviews just don't tell you. So let's get straight to it. <laughs> So as you can see, we have the Elephone U Pro in front of me on this desk. And I've been testing it out for around a month or so. So first of all, I'm going to go through sort of the design features, the build quality, the specs, and then I'm going to give you, after a month's use, my honest feedback about this phone. After watching this video, if you are interested in getting more information or indeed going through to purchase it, I will leave the link in the video description below. And in that link, it will include the latest discount code. So it will be the pretty much the cheapest price you can get on the market at this moment in time. So first of all, we're actually going to look at the build quality and how it actually looks. And I can't fault them here. Elephone have done an absolutely amazing job on this U Pro. They've taken what Samsung have done with the S8 and the S9, and they have actually almost matched it in terms of that build quality. It is one of the most premium looking and feeling phones in the hand. It's got a little bit of weight to it so that you know it's premium, but it is still a lot lighter than some of the other sort of bulkier phones that you will see in and around this budget area. It feels very refined. So what you're looking at here is a 5.99 inch AMOLED display, 2160 by 1080. So it's a full HD screen and it's obviously stretched to that 18 by nine ratio, which we're so accustomed to now. And again, it is basically the same design as the Samsung Galaxy series, the S8 and the S9. So we have the fairly small bezels top and bottom, and we actually have then the curved display here, which I can actually confirm is not just a glass like many other cheaper companies have tried to pass off as, a, as an edge to edge display. It does actually have a flexible panel underneath. So it does actually wrap round with the phone, not just the glass. As you can see here, the, the infinity display does actually roll over and that is very, very good again at this sort of price range. In terms of the sort of palm rejection, which often you'll find on edge to edge displays, I have noticed every now and again, I will be trying to type something or open an app and it will sense that my palm is on the screen and it will stop me doing it. And it's slightly frustrating every now and again. It's not terrible. It's certainly something that if they did a second version of this phone, for example, that I would suggest they just look at. Again, not a deal breaker by any means. It still wouldn't put me off buying or using this phone, but it's just not quite as good as the Samsung Galaxy phones, for example, in that technology. It's also pretty impressively seamless in the transitions between the back to the sides and to the front of the display as well. So you you see very little details that would suggest any there's a there's obviously the hairline um line really the hairline line it's a line that's the size of a hair i don't know what it's pretty seamless again not quite as good as the samson s9 but you are looking at two very very different price points it's a very very bright and vibrant display for 1080p it goes down not quite as low as i would like for nighttime viewing but still decent and in terms of bright daylight that display is gonna you're gonna have no problems and that display is a roughly around an 83 percent screen to body ratio so so you're getting a good bit of real estate uh, for the size of the phone so as well as the front it also wraps around and has a, a very very comfortable edge to edge back as well so in terms of the feel factor in the hand it's amazing i can't fault it i actually prefer this in the hand than the oneplus 5t which is my daily driver at this moment in time and i'm gonna go over whether this actually competes with the OnePlus 5T in terms of that daily driver aspect. Am I gonna to switch to the LFO New Pro? I'll get to that later on as well. So the actual material is of course metal and glass. It's Gorilla Glass 5 as well. So that's pretty impressive again at this sort of mid tier level. It has Type-C charge. It also has Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0. So you can pretty much charge this phone roughly from naught to full in around an hour and a half ish so that's roughly what i've been getting some people have had it better some people have had it worse but it's around that sort of area and you also have wireless charging as well so that is another impressive feature from this sort of mid-tier range mid-tier range mid a phone in the mid-tier area the yeah it has one speaker at the bottom as well. So I'm just going to play you a quick sound quality. I'm going to play you a clip to test the sound quality for you. Is probably a better description. Right, so I'm going to put it on full volume. 
Hi guys, it's HBIT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, as you well know, MWC has been awash in the news over the last few weeks. And obviously it has been on in Barcelona. Loads of massive companies like Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi, all of them sort of companies that are, you know, talking up their new products and no more so than, of course, the Samsung S9. So let's get straight to it. Now, I know a lot of you guys have... So as you can see, it is okay it's not amazing obviously a lot of people will use headphones or earbuds for example uh, when listening or viewing media so some people might not think that's a deal breaker others might okay the actual build quality of the uh, buttons they are fairly sturdy they don't feel flimsy at all they do actually have uh, a fairly nice click to them and they are of course again made of metal as opposed to plastic so that is something to uh, enjoy something to enjoy so that is another positive. We're just going to flip the phone around onto the back. And as you can see straight away, we have this uh, very, very metallic, shiny material, which is going to give you loads of fingerprints. And it is one of the downsides with many current phones. They are fingerprint magnets. And it's hard to get away from that fact. If that's a deal breaker, you can, of course, throw a case on it, which there is a case that comes in the box as well that you can throw on. But of course, for this benefit of the review, I'll keep it off. Also on the back, as well as it being a fingerprint magnet, uh, I'm not mad keen on that bright blue, but other people might be i would prefer something a little bit more subtle but i do like the fact that there is just that sort of little logo there's no text or anything like that so it does look pretty smart in terms of the actual cameras of as you can see here we have a dual camera on the back you also have the flash next to it and the fingerprint sensor underneath now the fingerprint sensor is in a fairly nice position it's slightly higher than perhaps i would like like on the oneplus 5t for example it is as you can see slightly lower and i feel that that is in a better location than this one a because for people with small hands they can reach it better but also i find that any fingerprint sensor again like with the samsung s9 if they're right next to the camera and in the same sort of groove as that is yes it looks fairly aesthetically pleasing but at the same time you might potentially put your finger over the camera and get smudges on the lens etc and you constantly have to wipe it it's still in a better location than perhaps the samsung s8 but i have smudged the bottom camera every now and again because it, like i mentioned it's here whereas something like the oneplus 5t for example i prefer the cameras to be separate up in the corner again like with the iphone 10 for example for me if you can put them up there i don't know why they put them in the middle right next to a fingerprint sensor it, it doesn't make any sense to me but again it's probably not necessarily a deal breaker but in terms of performance it is pretty accurate it does work you know 95 percent of the time without any problems there is a slight delay compared to some of the top flagships like when you compare it to the oneplus 5t the xiaomi mi 6 the Samsung phones, the Pixel, you know, you, you are getting a slightly more labored performance and it's accurate, like I said, but yeah, as you can see, there's definitely a sort of second delay and then it really kicks in. And that's a bit of a shame because I'm used to the OnePlus 5T and it's, it's almost instant. If you don't want to use the fingerprint sensor on the back, you can also use face unlock and it has this on here and it's very quick. It's just probably near enough as quick as the OnePlus 5T. So what we'll do is I'll just press the power button. And as you can see, it's unlocked. So I'll do it again. That's probably quicker than the fingerprint sensor. However, my only one issue with the face unlock on this, I'll just go into the settings to show you. So we go to screen lock, we go to face unlock. I'll just confirm my pin and I'll just take that off screen. Don't want you knowing my pin. Right, so here's my issue with face unlock. Number one, your phone may be unlocked by someone with a similar appearance or object shaped like you. I'm gonna stop you there because if you've got an oval shaped face, for example, they're basically saying you can unlock your phone with, I don't know, an egg. I mean, how, how on earth is that meant to be secure? An object shaped like your face. You're not gonna stop me buying the phone, but it's just, it, it, it tickles me, it does. So in terms of security, I would probably give it maybe a, a, a 2 out of 10. You've got your SIM card slot there. And unfortunately, one of the real downsides, again, for a lot of people will be the fact that it doesn't have a headphone jack. There are many phones that don't have headphone jacks now. And potentially, it is going to be the future, whether people kind of like it or not. Now, this phone's running Android 8 Oreo straight from the box. So that's good. Um, whether you'll see updates to that, I'm not too sure because again, with the budget and the mid-tier phones, a lot of the time they tend to keep the cost down by not following up with those software updates. And yes, Android Oreo will be great for a good few years, but if you need the latest and greatest all the time, then don't quote me on this, but 
this might not be the one for you. But like I said, most phones in this area will probably be the same. I wouldn't let that put you off. It's a very sleek interface. I've actually got a launcher over the top of this. So I've actually put Nova Launcher on there, for example. What I'll do is I'll quickly go to the actual default launcher just to show you how it comes out of the box. Okay, so this is the actual launcher that the phone will ship with. So as you can see, it's Android, but there is a skin over the top of it. It still will work in exactly the same way, but it is just a little bit interesting. It, it looks a little bit odd, but outside of that, it will run fairly smoothly uh, like you would see from stock. But like I mentioned, you can put a launch over it if you so wish. Now you can also customize this in quite an interesting way. So at the moment, it's kind of using a almost iPhone 10 uh, gestures control so if you swipe up from the bottom obviously you've got your app drawer but again if you swipe up from the bottom when you're on something like there it'll go back to the home page then we have our swipe up from the bottom right is back and swipe up from the bottom left is uh, your recent apps so obviously you can then go through and delete them or whatever from there or you can change it to pretty much standard Android go to navigation key and at the moment it's got high gestures so you've got that sort of big display and you want to make use of it or you can actually have the navigation keys and again they are fairly normal it's back recent apps and of course home button that is personal preference but you can do that if you so wish now the very very impressive thing about this mid-tier phone is its specs it's running the snapdragon 660 which is one of the latest from the qualcomm line and it's one of the best snapdragons outside of the 800 series like the 835 the 845 it is absolutely brilliant and it works like a charm there's very very little problems in terms of lags for example the helio p70 is possibly the only one that is again very new in that media tech range that can possibly try and compete with this outside of that this is certainly in my opinion probably the best one thing to note again that some people don't mention although like i mentioned it is very very slick and it runs very very smoothly with hardly any lag there are occasional crashes which i'm not sure whether that's down to the actual skin that it's using it's just one thing to know i've had a couple of crashes when on certain apps but outside of that it runs very very close to one of those top flagship phones while we're on those lines of sort of a few weird glitches and stuff like that i have also noticed that for example the nfc is a little bit touch and go sometimes i'm finding it works fine and then other times it, it seems to have a little bit of an issue and also the bluetooth as well now when i actually open the phone and try to transfer my information from one phone to the other usually it sort of gives you the command that you can launch your device using the information from another phone and you just have to go through that process but in order to transfer all your stuff across it asks you to do it via bluetooth yet the bluetooth on the phone isn't enabled from the box which is a little bit strange because the only way to actually enable the Bluetooth is to go past that setup stage and set the device up as new. And then once you've done that, you can then go into your settings, for example, and then you can obviously turn your Bluetooth on there, but you've already set the device up by then. So yeah, a little bit interesting. And I'm not sure whether that is across the board, but I definitely found that on mine. Dotty, no. Dotty. The GPU is the Qualcomm Adreno 512, which again is a pretty decent bit of kit in and around this sort of mid-tier area. Right, so I'm now gonna show you some benchmarks. We'll have first the Geekbench 4 results here, and then I will jump onto the Antutu benchmark score as well. And as you can see, those scores pretty much back up what I'm saying about using the Snapdragon 660. You are getting some really solid performance from this phone. Not quite the 800 series like the 835 and the 845, but certainly a lot better than most of the phones in and around this sort of price point. Right onto battery, 3,550 milliamps, gonna last you well through the day. Um, it does a really good job, to be honest. I've used this on pretty much hard use most days and it never really lets me down in terms of that battery. It just infuriates me even more when you see the likes of Samsung, for example, putting a 3,000 milliamp battery in their phone when this has got three and a half. So another amazing spec about this is it has 128 gigabytes of storage with expandable memory as well in that second SD card slot so that is really really impressive and a lot of people will be very pleased about that so in terms of that back camera we have a dual like I mentioned 13 megapixel camera and it's where for me it's it's really really disappointing it's really frustrating the fact that this phone on the whole is absolutely incredible for this sort of area 
but it is it is let down in my opinion by the camera it's not a terrible camera by any means but it is just an average camera if you're not interested in photography on your phone if you just want it for a few snaps and you you, you know want to take a few nice photos here and there then it's going to be absolutely fine no problem but if you want a, a camera that's near enough to flagship quality at a cheaper budget price which is difficult because there aren't many but this isn't that it's also pretty poor in low light as well due to the f 2.2 aperture the new samsung phone for example can go down to f 1.5 so that just goes to show you the difference and then we'll go on to the selfie camera as well which is an 8 megapixel camera which is okay it's a pretty decent front shooter there's a lot of phones around this sort of area which do really bad front facing camera shots this is sort of average to good. So in terms of the selfie camera, I don't expect at this price point anything better. However, the rear one, I would want to see a better improvement on the camera if they were to do another sequel, for example. On the front facing shooter, video recording can go up to 1080p. So no 4K video. Again, there's not many 4K cameras at this moment in time with smartphones around this sort of area. On the rear dual camera, you can actually have up to a video quality of 4K. Um, which is pretty good. There are a few smartphones in and around this area that only do 1080p, for example. Running across the screen now, you will see a list of information regarding the sort of networks and the LTE bands and all of that sort of stuff so that you can go through and check whether this is going to be compatible with your region, your country, for example. Now we're on to price. This phone comes in at 300 at this moment in time, which is, like I mentioned, a mid-tier price. It is not a cheap budget phone and it's not an expensive phone. It is somewhere in in the middle and while I feel it does warrant that price in terms of how much better it is than a lot of its competitors when you're starting to get into that price bracket you then start getting into the OnePlus 5T bracket as well and that's where the price could potentially be an issue for some people do they spend a, a little bit extra and get a, a real top flagship phone and that's where this price leaves me with a bit of a dilemma as to whether it was a good idea to price it at that price point if it came in 50 pounds cheaper then this would be uh, by far probably the best in its market right so we are down to a conclusion and at the start of the video i mentioned that i was using the oneplus 5t as my daily driver and would i be changing to the elephone u pro and the simple answer is no i can't and i'll tell you why it's not that this phone isn't amazing because at this sort of price point, it has so many things about it that I would highly recommend. Its display looks beautiful. The edge-to-edge -edge design, the flexible AMOLED panel underneath, the build quality is very sturdy. It feels very premium in the hand. It's, it will turn heads, no doubt about it, uh, because it is right up there in terms of its looks up with the Galaxy series from the Samsung phones. Is it the headphone jack that is a deal breaker for me? No. Um, while I'd like to see it, it wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker. I'd deal with it. I would just deal with it because you, some, some, at some point you're going to have to deal with it because it is going to go that way. Is it the fact that it's the Snapdragon 660 over the Snapdragon 835 in the OnePlus 5T? No, because yes, the 835 is a better processor just about. You're not going to notice in everyday use that much difference between the 660 and the 835. Yes, if you did a speed test, the 835 would be quicker. So I'd be tempted to use that phone for that reason. But I actually think that the feel of this is in the hand the way it looks for example is in my opinion better than the oneplus 5t due to the fact it's got a slightly narrower design as well it just it's much more comfortable you know you've got a 1080p screen you've got a 1080p screen exactly the same you've got an amoled and amoled you've got 6 gigabytes of ram and 128 gigabytes of storage you've got 6 gigabytes of ram and only 64 gigabytes of storage on this model obviously you can get the 128 gigabytes of the oneplus 5t but there's nothing in that to suggest why i couldn't potentially switch to the lfo new pro so why can't i possibly switch and the simple answer is i'm unfortunately the camera now for what i do and what i need i need a really good camera because i do a lot of social media stuff i need the pictures to be right up there yes in an ideal world i would probably have the google pixel 2xl at this moment in time for that camera but elsewhere on the market if you're not an apple user then the oneplus 5t is probably the best if not one of the top sort of three or four cameras on the market and that's why i use that one the camera on this one while it's not horrendously poor it is only average that's that's the sole reason why i wouldn't recommend buying this phone if that is indeed important to you so if you are an everyday user that wants a lovely looking phone a great display very snappy performance high ram high storage 
a head turner, a decent battery, and is not too affected by having only an average camera. And also, of course, if you don't mind a few occasional glitches here and there with Bluetooth and NFC and, and, and occasional crashes on certain apps, then yes, I would 100% wholeheartedly support your decision to go and purchase this phone. So that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Elephone U Pro. Is it something that you are strongly interested in? Uh, is it something that you are going to go and buy? Is it too expensive? Are there issues with it that you foresee being a problem for you and the reasons why you wouldn't buy it? Or is it the perfect smartphone for you at this moment in time in this area? Like and share if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. If you are interested in smartphone reviews and Android boxes, tablets, computers, laptops, all of that sort of stuff, but also software and app reviews as well, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell to be notified every time I post a video. And I'll see you in the next one. It's HBYT. Peace out.